Hi, I'm Chelsea Northrup, and this is my sidekick, Tony Northrup, and you're watching our show, News, Booze, and Reviews. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Squarespace the all-in-one platform for creating a fast and easy online website or portfolio. If you want 10% off, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code Photo news. There you go. You are so good at that. Practice makes perfect. I'm really proud of you. Just like photography. Some people uh, are born with it. What do you have first, Chels? Okay. I dug up a story that I knew would be near and dear to your heart. A photographer, a wildlife photographer in Florida might go to jail and has $100,000 in fines for encroaching on a protected species bird nest. Yeah, I get that. It, it's hard when you're out in the field for a long time trying to get closer and closer and there's no lens big enough. That's what I thought. So you always try That's to get I closer thought. and closer. Well, you do have to get, well, okay, so the law there is that you have to stay 500 feet away, but this is the you thing. You can't get a picture from 500 feet. Okay, so <laughs> if it's the law I guess you just can't and get you're a interrupting nesting, yeah. he was bumping his boat into their nesting area to make them fly away so we could get pictures. I'm not going to name his name or his portfolio sites. I don't think this guy should get any more attention for it. But I guess some researchers down there saw him do it eight times. And finally it caught up to him. He pleaded guilty to reduce his fine or his punishment, whatever you want to call it. So he got uh, one count of violating an endangered species. Yeah, wildlife photography can really benefit the animals because you take great pictures and then more people become exposed to that animal. And, and the photographer, him or herself, begins to learn their behaviors and can really yeah. understand the intricacies of it. But there's also the risk that you interfere with their life. Anytime you're looking at something, you're also affecting it. Yeah. Nobody is completely stealthy. And then as a photographer, you get obsessed with getting the shot and getting better and you do closer. Get and, and yeah, this guy clearly got a little too obsessed and he began to interfere with the, the birds. I mean, let's hope that he didn't actually interfere with their breeding processes or their feeding processes? They said processes. that he did. The type of bird was called a snail kite. Yeah. And apparently these researchers saw him doing it repeatedly. It wasn't a one-time thing. But I don't want this guy going to jail. I really don't want to pay tax dollars to send this guy to jail. I think instead, every time he goes out to take pictures of birds, he should have to bring a really annoying loud person with him. Like a screaming toddler eating a bag of chips. <laughs> or Richard Simmons. Yeah. Um, Timely reference, Charles. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Flava Flav. <laughs> oh my goodness. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 46. So that's how I know all these cool young people. I just have some boring gear news. Samsung announced a, a NX mini camera. So they have their NX mirrorless series of cameras, yeah. which are just little mirrorless cameras. And then the NX mini is going to be, it's kind of like the Nikon one series. Like it's a super small mirrorless camera, but and we kind of talked about this last time, how camera companies need to adapt to the new world. And it's definitely adapting. It's focused on selfies. So no. it has this screen that flips like 180 degrees above it. Yeah. So you specifically can hold it like this conveniently. Oh, we're putting all of our time and money into perfecting selfies. Uh, we are. And in fact, that's the market they're going for is people who aren't satisfied with the quality of their selfies. So it has interchangeable lenses. And I can't imagine anybody who's taking selfies is going to be like, oh, I, you know, I better get a good they're quality a portrait lens. They're a connoisseur. All yeah. of these sophisticated selfie people, they're like, you know, I'm just looking, I'm zooming in and I'm just seeing that the image quality isn't there. Yeah, Not enough I want pores. some a little bit of bouquet and it's got some vignetting yeah. in the corner. So I need to get the, the nice prime lens. And in fact, they do have a nice prime. They have... You actually like it. You're like, in fact, I'd like a really great <laughs> selfie. Yeah, they're coming out with three lenses, a 9mm f3.5, which is 24mm equivalent. And then they have a like a kit zoom. And then they have a 17mm f1.8, so they have like a nice, fast, normal zoom. But it's like a regular camera that just slips around, right? It's also got NFC. So if you have, iPhone doesn't support this, but if you have an Android phone, it'll connect right up to it and allow you to get stuff on Facebook a little quicker. Oh. Okay, I guess that's pretty cool. It's just cool that they made like a camera for 16 to 21 year olds, but it has like good lenses and stuff. At least that's the plan. We'll see. It's 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 probably gonna die in a few months. I don't imagine oh, this taking off. You're not optimistic. No. Okay. <laughs> I found something 
a little bit geeky, a little gear geeky that I thought you would like. Why would I like? I don't know.、Stuff? I guess when I was looking at my news today, I was just thinking about like what would really impress you.、Mm-hmm. And I found that G Pixels is making an enormous 150 megapixel sensor, or they already made it. So、okay. it's called the G Max 3005. It's the normal height of a full size sensor. But it's like mega long. It looked really weird.、Oh, it's like the size of a、oh. nutty butter bar. Well, that's weird. What kind of lens do they have for that thing? I don't know. Is it a panning lens? They、like、didn't show a lens、cameras? that would work with it. It only shoots in black and white, and they said that it's for research purposes. So this isn't. I don't think they're planning on having a consumer. So、lens. I can't get a 150 megapixel selfie with that because I would like the long one. I could like get a full body selfie. Oh, just turn it sideways. Yeah, exactly. That sounds really interesting. I think that you should approach、yeah. them, and we should try to. Get a camera with that sensor. Okay, I'll sell that idea to them. That's mine. <laughs> That's what you would take pictures of. Okay,、uh, more gear stuff. Samyang, which sells under a bunch of different names like Rokinon. They announced three new lenses: an eight millimeter f two eight, a ten millimeter f two eight, and twelve millimeter f two o. And those are all for mirrorless mounts. So mostly for Fuji,、uh, micro four thirds. They're not all available on all. Platforms, but、uh, I really like the Samyang slash Rokinon lenses. In fact, yeah, I have、uh, a few Rokinons that I like. Your camera over here is using a Rokinon lens. They're very good quality. That that lens is like less than three hundred dollars, and it's one of the sharpest lenses、uh, the、really? XO Mark has ever tested. Wow.、Uh, they mostly make all manual lenses. I hear that they're going to be making、uh, some autofocus lenses in the future. Anyway, it's good to look at after those third party lenses. It's good、cool. to get nice cheap gear without the name brand. I respect that. Speaking of cool gear,、mm-hmm. I found an adapter with a built-in neutral density filter.、Oh, It's a hundred dollars.、Cool. I was super excited about it. I think that that's pretty convenient to just have it built in, and you can、yeah. turn a little a blue ring on it to let in more or less light. You, oh, you know. so like a variable neutral density go、yeah. right into the adapter.、Yes. Let's do our next <clears throat> segment. Chit chat. When we take your YouTube comments and respond and react to them. Oh, okay. Do, I haven't seen these. What do you have for me? This one's from Brian Lape, or Lape, something fancy. I'm sure. Is the lens and camera behind Tony's head the one from the nature photography video? He's talking about that one. Oh yeah, and people always complain that the way these videos are composed is coming out of my head. Um, but yeah, that's the original Canon 500 millimeter f/4, not、yeah. the ten thousand dollar Mark II, but the original one, which is still really expensive. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, this one is from Jai Flow. Every time I look at Chelsea, I see Robin, Robin from How I Met Your Mother, and I don't see the re- resemblance. We both have like eyes and yeah, I've seen have, that one before too. We have. Hey, I can kind of see it. Yeah, but. You always get Caesar Milan. Oh, always、so、since I grew up to go to you. Always with the Caesar Milan. I got a picture of him too. Let's show it. He's the camera whisperer. I see it. I actually see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I see it too. You kind of look like him. All right. Let's see. Zachary Scholl says more of the stop it segment. It was hilarious. People <laughs> like us just being abusive and mean to other people. I know. But can you know, I tell you, you want more of it? Send your picture in. We'll, we'll make fun of your picture. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> so you like it? I we're gonna do stop <laughs> it today, but it was really hard to get like scrounge together some pictures this、yeah. time because the first time we just got flooded with pictures. Then once people saw the segment, they were like, "I'm not, I'm not submitting pictures." But if you're brave, you could submit your pictures to Tony at Northrop. dot org. We want your bad pictures and title it the subject. Make it stop it so that we know that your pictures are in there, and、uh, we'll put it up and we will. We'll just be horrible to you, and you're gonna love it. Yeah, but don't send us like just a picture that's blurry or something. Like we want something that makes you cringe,、so、like、bad. you're trying really hard to do something cool and it just didn't come across. We've all been there. I was saying to someone today that they said they weren't brave enough to post a picture, and I think the thing is. Um, if you have bad pictures and you know it, that means you've made progress. If you can't find any of your bad pictures, that means you're either still bad or you're delusional. So it's a really good thing if you have bad pictures. You have something to measure your progress by, and I think that's cool. This is from Cindy Besitter. Hi, I want to shoot naked birds with a giant lens from far away when they don't know they're being photographed. Birds. Oh yeah. What kind of camera and lens is cheapest so I can shoot these、um, birds? Cindy, you're making me really nervous, and I don't even feel 
comfortable giving you advice, and I don't know that I should for legal reasons. It sounds like it's a wildlife. We help wildlife photographers all the time. I don't understand what your concern is. Naked birds from far away, so they don't know they're being photographed. Look, I think have I think birds have a right to know. A right to privacy. Yeah. Do you want to throw out a suggestion? Yeah, I think Cindy should see a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. This one's from Luis Colon. Luis, I'm going to read this. You guys hate Fuji. Maybe Olympus paid the reviews. Not a fair review. Fuji is the best camera over Olympus camera. Luis, <laughs> you've never been more wrong. I wish Fuji would give me money or Olympus. Yeah. But we just don't take money. You can't bribe us. Have you, I'm a loose cannon. Have you seen me? You can't pay me to behave. You know so, what's uh, funny is we released that first review. Yeah. And everybody said, hey, Olympus is clearly paying you. Yeah, Olympus is paying And then we released you. a second review and several people said, Fuji is paying Hey, Fuji you. is paying you. Nobody's paying us. Do you think, no. look around. Do you think we'd be doing this if all these people were giving us money? And frankly, both cameras had serious issues <laughs> that we called them out on. Yeah. Yeah, they both have much room for improvement. We were like, I was scared for my safety after that Fuji review. People weren't just like, oh, you're wrong. I like that camera. They were saying things like, you guys are idiots. I hate, people hated us personally. People were yelling at their computers. Yeah, it's not our fault. I was yelling at that Fuji. That thing's a pain. I like it. We like it I better it. now. I said, I said, I like, I love and I hate that camera more than any other camera I've ever used. Because there are so many things I love about it and so many things that just try, like why did you do that, Fuji? This was my thing. I'm people, waiting for the firmware People update. are like, you should know the camera really well. That wasn't the point of the review. We got two cameras that we had never touched before in our lives. And we wanted to show people what it's like to go from a DSLR, being a DSLR user, to using a mirrorless. And the Olympus was easy. I took to that thing like a fish to water. I just knew what I was doing. Yeah. And the Fuji, I was kind of like, whoa, everything is a little tricky everything's a little different well for the record i read the manual on both cameras well aren't and, you aren't you just so smart but i was still struggling with the fuji all the stuff people like read the manual it's not documented in the manual and in fact these are usability problems that anybody's going to have and some of the problems i had uncovered before we recorded the video yeah. but i still wanted to show it for storytelling purposes i wanted to show you oh if you put the if you push your shutter halfway down it decides to ignore all your manual fo focusing yeah. efforts it does all these ridiculous things i did get used to a lot of the quirks i, I still love that Fuji. <laughs> We're keeping it. We're using it. Yeah. It, it has great things about it, but it's also a pain in the ass. No doubt. Fuji paid us to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this segment brought to you by Olympus. <laughs> Our last comment comes from JTW Art. Let's see what JT had to say. Hearing about Squarespace is getting really annoying. Squarespace, the all-in-one pl platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional yes. website or online portfolio. Yeah. Hearing about that is getting annoying. Yeah, and I feel really sorry. If I had known that he didn't want to hear about Squarespace and their wonderful 24-7 support, I would have never brought it up. I wouldn't have talked about the Care Bear layer that's always there to answer your questions. I wouldn't have talked about the great design. I wouldn't have talked about the fact that it's only $8 a month and that it's super affordable and professional looking. Yeah, I wouldn't have talked about how I can just drag a bunch of pictures in and then people on their iPhones and iPads and Android devices and a hundred other mobile devices can just see it instantly with no hacking or coding or anything yeah, like that. I wouldn't have even... I'm so sorry that we brought all this up. Well, and you know what? He's an artist. So I'm definitely not going to bring up that it would be a great opportunity for you to showcase your art and get free e-commerce and have a store where you could sell your paintings. I've seen them. Yeah, I stalked you a little. And I'm not going to say that you should get a Squarespace account, but I will say I'm sorry I talk about Squarespace. I, I saw that he specifically mentioned that he wasn't sure how it would work on different mobile devices. He had a little apology written in there. So I... It, so on Squarespace, it would work just fine, but he doesn't want to hear about Squarespace. No, he's going to have a hacked together website probably. Oh. That's too bad. We shouldn't talk about how Squarespace allows us to do this show. I wouldn't happen at all if it weren't for the generosity of Squarespace. So we won't. Let's just move on. The all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or all, uh, portfolio. I mean... <laughs> What is the Squarespace? How would you get there just, if you were to talk about it, which we wouldn't do? Let's just not. Let's just move on. They could probably go to squarespace.com slash Tony. That would show their su support for the show. And then, you know, you know, they wouldn't have to put a credit card in or anything. You get a 14 day free trial. And then if they decide to sign up, they can use the coupon code photo news. 
and get 10% off. Okay. What a great discount. It seems like a fantastic deal for a fantastic service, but I guess we shouldn't bring it up. I did want to bring up one other news thing, really oh, minor thing. We're going back to the news. Panasonic announced 15 millimeter f1.7 lens for Micro Four Thirds. It's cool. It's going to be a great lens. Wait, what it's is a 30 it? millimeter equivalent. Uh, 15 millimeter f1.7. So it's the equivalent of a 30 millimeter f3.4, hmm. and it costs like $900. So it should be super sharp. Okay. <laughs> But it's going to be like a little telephoto normal lens. You might be able to mix it in as a portrait lens now and then, but it's really fast. Should be good. Autofocus. I'm glad we went back to that. I, I'm excited for it. It's got I'm excited. Aperture. It's sarcastic. got an aperturing on the lens, which is something I love about the Fuji lenses. Yeah. But the most micro four thirds lens, lenses don't have that. Available in early June. Well, that sounds cool. Uh, we have new stuff to show off. Oh, yeah. You want to bust out that big old Tamron? Woo! Man, this thing's heavy. Yeah, 600 millimeters. Yeah, so we took this out. It's the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter F5 to 63. We took it out and took some pictures and I liked it. You have to use it a little more, but. Yeah, so it's far it, it's doing really well. Be sure to watch the full review when it comes out, but I'm going to be pitting it against this, which is my current recommendation for Canon users, the 400 millimeter F5.6. This is like pro grade quality images. And that. I'm not so sure. We'll see. Yeah, We're gonna I'm going to do a side by side test. Um, How much is this, the Canon? I, I, it's about thirteen hundred dollars new, but you can get them used for about a thousand dollars. Okay, and that, and that is a thousand sixty dollars. A thousand sixty. So of course it's brand new, so you can't get it used. But the used prices on this are about the same as the new prices on this. People love new stuff, so yeah. we'll have to put these head to head and, and see who wins. Yeah, but so far I really like that lens and I put some pictures up on Facebook and everybody really loved it and they were really excited that I got it with a thousand dollar lens because most of the time I use that big guy back there. Yeah, people get kind of put off when you use that. And it feels like cheating, right? It's they still hard. It's, cheating. it's even harder because your arm is shaking under the weight <laughs> yeah. and it's like you can't see anything. You have to just get a feel for where something's going to be. You have to learn to just point and get your subject. There's no looking around for it. It's impossible yeah. to look around. That right, because your arm gets worn out. It takes out. hours and hours of practice. Yeah. Um, I have some stuff to show off. Okay. What are these called? Uh, Mezzi? I, I learned that I was mispronouncing the name. I'm not sure if it's Mize or Mezzi. Either way, there's a link. So check it out. Uh, we have two sets of their headphones and they're not a sponsor, but they did send these to us to show off. And if you send us free stuff, we will definitely show it off. Well, if we like it. We love, yeah, If we, we love free stuff. Yes, but I wasn't sure about these because I thought that they were just kind of showing off that they're made of wood and that they're super beautiful. And I thought, you know what? I'm kind of a skeptic. I'll see if I like them when I get them. And these earbuds, nothing fits in my little tiny ears. These fit. They block out all sound and they have incredible bass for earbuds. So I was really impressed and I was really excited to talk about them actually. Yeah, we've all been fighting over who gets to use these yeah, things. I don't those sound so much better than the earbuds that come with my iPhone. And they hurt and your, those sound the good. The iPhone ones hurt your ears. Because yeah. uh, they're hard plastic, but these are rubber and they come with a bunch of different tips for different ears. They have ears. a little mic on them too. Oh, they sound so they do good, sound good, especially when you're listening to music. These sound good too, but it's not as surprising because they look like they should sound good. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's as hard to make a huge headphone sound good, but they have really nice sound quality and I like the wood. I, I think they're so much classier than those stupid Beats headphones that you see everybody wearing. And they feel weightless because they have these things yeah. that support them on your head. Um, they look great and yeah. they sound great. And even the cords are nice. Like, they have these no tangle cords on both sets. I don't, you know what I don't understand really nice. is that these were obviously meant for me, but yet you and Justin keep taking them. <laughs> we're all fighting over and these headphones. We have two with three people. I actually think this was someone's secret plan to like sabotage the office. They're like, let's give them two sets of headphones <laughs> for three people and see who dies. I've actually been slowly poisoning you and Justin <laughs> so I can have both to myself. Well, you know what? Let's get to another set of headphones. <laughs> Not to kill anybody. Hey, that's how I roll. Hey, let's do stop it while I'm being mean and thinking about poisoning people. So let's get the laptop and we'll review some bad pictures that people agreed to let us have make fun of. That's People think we're just being mean, but people wanted their pictures to be made fun no, of. No, we're and also very, very mean. And I'm not we only ugly on the outside, I'm also ugly on the inside where it counts. How am I gonna make fun of this? That kid's adorable. All right, so this kid was in front of a lighthouse. That's what this picture proves. Yeah. She's not very well lit. The horizon looks a little bit, ooh. Did you notice that? Uh, it actually looks pretty level to me. I don't know why you would bring that up. It seems fine. <laughs> 
I was just hoping it would be. I, I saw that the person said that they submitted it specifically to trigger my OCD. That's what so I figured. So then I, I became hyper aware of it. So they at least could have like crouched down so the kid was kind of in the frame next to the This picture the just tower. isn't that bad. I can't, it's not inspiring any. The kid's cute. Her feet are cut off in her and she's in the shade, but. <laughs> What's going on with this baby and the pumpkin on it? I don't understand. I don't think people are doing this enough for me to say stop it. <laughs> stop putting pumpkins on your baby's head. <laughs> no, but he does that. Look at his little face. It's like, like he that. knows it's wrong. He's like, why would you do this to me? I, I think if people were putting their babies in pumpkin badges, that's cliche enough to say stop it, but I've never seen this. Don't bring pumpkins into your baby's bed and stack them on the kid's head. This is a crazy picture. He's got pumpkins on his shirt. We get it with the pumpkins. And look, he's got little candy corns also <laughs> on his outfit and so, he looks pissed about it this is like a common mistake not the fact that there's a pumpkin on the kid's head that i agree with common. you that that's not common <laughs> uh, but there is a really harsh flash so the catch lights and his eyes aren't very flattering they Stop use the, the flash. On camera flash on camera flash Bounce on a baby it. especially washes out the baby and then the other very common thing especially for baby photography is that people try to throw together this kind of like mishmash set yeah, and you really have to try to find good props and you, you got to work on it a little more. I'm actually coming out with a, a baby video on how to get together some props. And oh, do you, do you do this? You stack some pumpkins on the kid's head? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it with the pumpkins on the kid's head. <laughs> Stop it. What is going on here? <laughs> this is a baby in a laundry basket with a flower on its head. Oh, another bad baby pose. Was <laughs> it, is it taken through a peephole or something? <laughs> <laughs> it does look really blurry. And this person did say to me that they didn't know before reading our book, Stunning Digital Photography, that you should put the focus point on the nearest eye. They said they'd just get it in the general direction of the person. And that's probably why this baby is so blurry. That's a blurry I baby. I do not know why that baby is so blurry. Also, because like this is out of focus and that's in focus. And what's going on here? What is with this light? The kid's like blinded by the sun, but then there's all this shadow here. And they're in like a diaper because that's how everybody wants to remember their childhood. <laughs> they have special clothes just so they don't have to go to the toilet. You that is a were a baby. baby. <laughs> This is an example of like wildlife photography with a really slow shutter speed. And as a result, it looked like someone hacked off this bird's head and put a penis there. <laughs> Stop taking pictures of penis head birds. <laughs> it's, they're rare and endangered. I really hope you were 500 feet away. Yeah, you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. Stop putting up pictures that are just mediocre. Just keep taking pictures until you get a good picture and then share it. And if the picture's blurry, if you can't see the eyes, don't put it up. Just stop sharing all those pictures. This picture should be shared. Well, okay. I agree with you. That's it. People weren't very brave after we, I mean, you were really <laughs> mean this time. So now the next week we will have zero pictures for our segment. You made fun of a baby for wearing a diaper. How do you think that's gonna affect us next week? That's it for Stop It. So let's do um, some <sighs> nice reviews of pictures now. Okay, constructive okay. criticism. Yes. So here we have a, like a massive brake drum. What do you think that is? Mm. Oh, it's cool, it's industrial. It's cool. So it looks I, like a combination of HDR and black and white. Yeah, I think they picked a good subject. They like a nice gritty subject when using HDR. Um, but the processing doesn't look quite right. Yeah, it, you know, I think it became a little muddy. Yeah, that can happen if... Oh, you know what? Parts of this are just... Are they out of focus? I was going to say they're out of focus, but... It... No, it doesn't make any sense. It's just... not consistent. Yeah. Look how sharp the window is, the reflection in the window. That's relatively sharp, right? Yeah, I don't know. But then the walls... Is it a processing thing, or...? I tend to think it's something that happened in the processing. I'd like to know what... Which HDR processing software they used, like Photomatix, or... Um, but I do like the picture and I like the subject. I think that the processing is just not as clean as it could be. Zoom in on that uh, white window in the back. Is that more what's in focus? Was the original picture out of focus? Yeah, I guess what we're saying is we think it's a cool picture. We just got a little distracted by some of the technical yeah. issues here. Oh, that is super cool. Yeah, this is a cool photo. Uh, Wow, so it's a shadow overlaid on a wall that almost exactly mirrors the shadow. I, I love that. That was a really great eye. Yeah, that's cool. My one thing is maybe recover some of those blown out highlights. Mm. 
Yeah, I can see there's some heavy vignetting applied to it. Yeah. Uh, looking at the histogram, there aren't actually any highlights. Oh. I mean, you could probably bring it down some, just darken it overall, but you can see the reds are... You could bring them farther brighter if you wanted to. That's a cool photo, though. Yeah, but a great job making a picture just out of light. I love that. And it's Nicely original, done. too. I haven't Definitely seen one like original, this. Definitely so original, yeah. I always love when we see something original. Abstract, creative, fantastic work. Cemetery. Cemetery. Cemeteries are really difficult to take pictures in. Yeah, you know, they always convey a certain mood, and I think that's the hardest part, is capturing the, the cemetery mood. Yeah. <laughs> because, so, I like, I think you'd have, like, a thick fog... If that were your choice. And yeah, here we this have is, this like bright, happy sky. Well, there's this bright sky, but look at all the things competing with his subject. I think Jesus here is the subject. We have these bright colors that are jumping out at us. That was the first thing I saw yeah. were those things. Bright yeah. colors carry a lot of visual weight. So that means if you have a lot of blues and greens in your picture and then you have something bright red, everyone's eye is going to go to that. And this is not something you want people to see. So um, I don't know. Composition could have helped. Um, if your opportunity to compose the shot a different way is gone, cropping is a way to solve some problems. I, I guess the first thing I'd ask is, what's the subject of the photo? And then once Jesus. we identify the subject, well, I don't Jesus. know. We don't know. Maybe that is the photographer's intention, but maybe they had a different subject. Because right now, the subject, like the sky, is such an important part of the picture, but maybe it doesn't need to be. And, and we're saying that we're having a hard time figuring out the subject because there are so many things that compete for the attention. Um, I did like the, if Jesus here is your uh, focal point, then I did like the way it was composed with him kind of looking off to the right here. Yeah. Sometimes you can crouch down low and get a clean background by just showing the sky. Black and white helps, I think. Yeah, in the very least it kind of takes those away. Something to think about. Well, I'd like to be there. Yeah. Color a, me jealous, Tony. <laughs> that's a beautiful scene. Needs a llama. Yeah, you're right. It needs one other thing, right? But but it's a it's, it's a, a beautiful nice picture. picture. Yeah. A llama would make it pop. When I say that, I just mean a focal point. Maybe a llama in a bikini. Oh, that's a cutie. Yes, but his eye isn't in focus. Yep, gotta go for that eye. Just keep snapping Look, pictures until he you get one. He stabbed his little hand. Ooh, they have little <laughs> scary little hands. Oh my goodness, are those his testicles? Oh, Chelsea, this, don't be rude. I, I'm just saying. I think it's just it's part of the tree. Oh, oh, you might be right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um. So with wildlife photography, you want the eye to be the sharpest thing in the photo. But other than that, you caught this squirrel in a really unique pose. I've never seen their little hand like that before. I don't know if those are its testicles, but that's interesting too. <laughs> you used to be a vet tech. How do you not, how can you not identify animal testicles? Well, I'm pretty sure those would be hairy, <laughs> but I don't know what's going on with the squirrel. I don't know his personal life. I mean, he's I'm a Brazilian squirrel, maybe. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> But yeah. Um, so just keep snapping pictures until you get one of the eye in focus and get it sharp. I, unfortunately, it's not telling us your metadata, but you know, keep. We're pressing eye. I'm pressing eye. <laughs> it's not appearing. Um, oh, can I just mention? Keep people, focusing. People YouTube. get frustrated when things aren't working, like when we press eye and the metadata doesn't come up, but our screen capturing software changes the way everything works. I think that's crucial information oh, to relay. Yeah, maybe. maybe All right. What's this next one? Oh, I like horse the, and carriage. I like the kid in the cart. Um, okay, so I'm just thinking about it, it compositionally, and uh, you know, I, I guess I kind of wish I could see a little bit of where they were going. I really like this picture. I think. I feel like some processing could really make it pop. Mm. And that's what, for it. I like it. I, my silence is not because I don't like it, it's because, 
I like the boy in the background. Just bumping up those shadows because a lot of detail on the horse was lost and the clarity and the snow looks actually nicely exposed. I, I think the most interesting part of the picture is the boy. I think so too. And I think this crop, I think this crop works much better or something in between. But you know, when you zoom back here, it, you, you can't even see. Like, but my eye still goes right to him. Picture. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's one of those things where it depends how big you're printing. If you're making a 40 by 80 print of it or a 40 by 40 print of this, a huge print, then this is probably the right composition. If you're putting it on the web and people are going to be looking at it on their mobile phones, then you'll probably need to crop a little tighter so that they can see what's going on. Yeah, so even as you're watching the video here, we'll just zoom in and you can see, you know, the difference between this and, and this, the focal point will become a lot clearer to you. I like that picture though. I think they should play around with it a little bit. I'm just trying I don't mind the color. I don't mind the color either. I'm also either. wondering if I... I, li I like it in black and white because you don't see the father behind the boy. And it just is a whole different story. Off, slightly off camera here. I'm digging through my... Uh, presets? Uh, yeah, Lightroom presets to see if there's one that particularly strikes my attention. I was just thinking maybe something that made it look a little aged. Yes, I agree. It has that aged, vintagey look to it. Okay. I should make a video on how to get good presets. Okay. Uh, I genuinely thought this was one of my pictures that got mixed in, but it's, I guess it's not. Um, because you do kind of get this picture when you're taking a hike up a mountain. It looks a lot like Puerto Rico. Let's bring down the highlights. Yeah, you can see the clouds up here the, are blown out and up here. and The histogram, yeah. You know, it's a good time to shoot HDR. Um, if we had the raw file, we'd be able to, you can see as I recover it, you know, even these are going to stay blown out. You won't be able to save it in a JPEG, but you could in a raw file, um, shoot HDR or just make sure you don't blow out the highlights and then bring up the shadows later. Otherwise it's a nice scene. I like the kind of natural framing that happens with the trees here. The clouds are dramatic and pretty. Yeah. I feel like you captured the spot as good as you could. That's a beautiful spot. Yeah, that is. It's very down and abbey-ish. Mm. Definitely somewhere in uh, Japan. We went to Japan, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I love the lines in it. Uh, I, I, I love the composition of it. Don't you feel like these lines just kind of lead you to it really nice? Everything is nice and uh, geometrical, and that's definitely... The theme for the, yeah, the building. I that's like why I was thinking. Like, you had the black and white. I know, but maybe the warm colors are nice. Maybe you could even just desaturate. But my thing is the lines are so beautiful in this photo, but all of these different colors in the grass are distracting in color. Yeah. Can I show you a trick that I have? You have a trick? Yeah. Show it to me. Oops. Thanks. Uh, these are all brown, so you can be more selective because this is going to screw up the building too, but grab the yellows here and then drag them over to the greens <laughs> and then drag the browns and drag them over to the yellows. Oh, you're a filthy liar. Yeah, well, this is how you can make green grass if you didn't get green grass. And I did a sloppy job on it. You? Because it's a light room, not You Photoshop, dirty but, cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that would work too. I like that too. Well, I mean, obviously you'd want to... Select the parts. Just a little quick tip how to cheat your grass when it's not in season. Otherwise, I love that picture. Beautiful Yeah, lines. that was beautiful. And gorgeous sky on this wow. one. Wow. I mean, this has got to be one of the most wee. intense sunsets I've ever I seen. I know. How'd they even do that? I, I wonder... suspect it's been punched up a little bit, but still, it looks really good. Oh, it looks like maybe we have a little HDR going on on there, too. Or maybe not. Maybe that was just you bringing up the shadows. That might just be you. That's just me. Do you like it better just all in silhouette or with a little... Maybe it comes a bit cluttered? Um, I don't like the way it looks, you know, it, because the quality is so bad because you're cranking up the shadows like that. Like yeah. it feels a little distracting to me. But if it were HDR and we had, you know, nice shadows, nice noiseless shadows... I think I like it raised a little tiny bit. 
Yeah, I actually like seeing some more detail in there. Because this is just completely in silhouette, maybe just a tiny bit, just to get a bit of depth in the landscape. But this is really beautiful. I wish I could have been there. Yeah, you can see they went to, for a perfect symmetry in the composition because they, that's one of the things you do when you have a reflection, like just make it symmetrical. Yeah, they just a slam dunk. put the horizon in the middle here. Yeah, that's beautiful, good. Beautiful, perfect reflection. Light painting. That's some cool light painting. Okay. I, there's no particular like story to it or anything, but they're cool lights and you got a nice sharp exposure. It's very avant-garde. Stuff that's in focus. Yeah, it's cool. Nice it done. All right, what do you think this is? A golden eagle? I was wondering that. Can you, do you it's see those say. talons? Yeah, that is Holy really terrifying. Shemily. That's what I love about this photo is it, you know, it has a clear focal point and it, and it does, it tells you a little bit about the animal and their biology and their behavior. I love that you can see those talons. That, that's a great pose that you can so This was I taken at 200 millimeters. What? <laughs> Run with, with a crop body, <laughs> so they're at like an effect of 300 millimeters, but I don't see bands on it or anything. It doesn't look like it's in a zoo. The, look at the size of its ankles. This thing is a terrifying creature. But yeah, I... What? F35? ISO 100. Do you think maybe they could have gone like ISO 400 and then opened up the f-stop a bit to get more in focus? It yeah. looks like the legs, the back leg, is the most in focus. I'm seeing the most feather detail. When I have lots of light with wildlife, I'd love to shoot at f8 or even f11. Yeah. <clears throat> Occasionally f16 just to get the entire animal in focus because your depth of field is always going to be so shallow. So they had a lot of work, lot to work with. They were working at one twenty five hundred, and it's for, still if if they have image stabilization, I would have shot at one ninetieth. So you could have so, used the reciprocal rule because you had you were only at 200 millimeters, so you could have done a 200th of a second. Or maybe yeah. because it was moving a bit, maybe I would have tried to play it safe and gone even higher. Yeah, but you know they could have dropped several stops and still been at 1 500th of a second, yeah. you know, F8 or something like that. Something to think about, but great shot. We're just trying to find something to provide helpful criticism, yeah. helpful feedback about. That's why they sent it in. Nice detailed picture of pollen, it looks like. Yeah, I, you know, it looks like a macro shot, so it's too bad that we didn't get a bigger image because it's hard to see if they got it in focus. Yeah, but the macro nice shots, it's nice to be able to see a, a nice large picture. It's interesting. I don't know what that is. I sent some, I think it's a llama. That's. That's a llama. Well, the, the light is nice. It looks nice and sharp. Um, you might also try focus stacking to get the rest of this in focus. Mm -hmm. um, though you're at F7.1, you definitely could have used a higher f stop number just to get more in focus. Unless it's just handheld. In which case, don't handhold it. Oh, okay. All right, more eagles today. Gorgeous picture, beautiful light. That's, there's a lot of nice light in that photo. Beautiful. Um, Perfectly sharp, perfect shot, but the pose here, this is exactly what we look for with a bird picture. This this is my favorite angle, not a perfect profile towards you a little bit. You have that setting sun behind you, just perfect. Nice warm light, gorgeous blue sky behind you. Um, Would you crop out some of the limbs to the left? There's some chromatic aberration on some of the back limbs. Yeah, there there is a little bit going on. So you're saying just maybe crop it down a little tiny? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I think that's overall a stronger picture. I don't think we needed so much of the branches and such. Um, with that seven, that seven D, we always try to shoot at ISO one hundred whenever possible. And you definitely could have shot this at ISO one hundred. Um, even with the reciprocal rule, you could be at like one five hundredth of a second. But I, with the, even with that lens, which is the lens I always recommend, I'll shoot at one two fiftieth. Even though it doesn't have image stabilization, I'll just take plenty of pictures. Yeah. Because, you know, you're getting five, six frames a second with that 7D. Just, if you take 20 pictures, one of them is going to be sharp even without IS. And the bird seems to be holding still for you. So get that ISO down. Um, and also check Chapter 8, Editing Wildlife Photos, for information on how to get that blue sky cleaned up. Because it's super easy. And that picture is worth it. You should make a beautiful big print out of it. Great picture. All right, we have a driving photo here. I like this one. It looks fun. 
Yeah. Uh, so they have a little bit of a pan going on. Yeah. But not much of a pan. I, I think I'd like to see this. The thing about panning is the faster the shutter speed, the more sharp shots you'll get. The slower the shutter speed, the better pan you'll get, but you have to take 100 pictures to get one shot. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll start at 1 500th and then I'll go to 1 250th and then until I'm down to like 1 30th of a second and I'm just praying that <laughs> I get a single shot out of hundreds. Um, and here I, I think we don't see enough of a pan to make it interesting. I think it's still pretty interesting. Yeah, it's cool and a, a beautiful scene. You're right. But I would definitely slow that shutter down. We want to see those wheels spinning. Got to see some motion in the wheels. Yeah. All right, we have a snowy... Is it snow or is it just a... Oh, yeah, it's, it's frozen. Snow. Uh, landscape. Um, it's a little oversaturated. Do you see the background, the sky, how there's... Yeah, it looks like they did something with the... The blues. The, blues. the colors are a little strange. Um, I mean, we know what it's like. You pretty much just have gray skies for like four months out of... Yeah, that's probably about what it looked like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I know I you're trying to take landscape pictures, but <laughs> everything's so dull. I imagine this is in New England. It might be a West Coast. Yeah. They're right. They need some color in there. Um, Actually, it's so frozen. It might be Canada. It is very frozen. Yeah, I don't even... We don't see that kind of freezing around here. It's just missing a little something. Like this, I can tell that this could have been a leading line, but the angle they have on it, you can't really see it. It's kind of leading to this little structure there, but not quite. Yeah. Maybe a crop could help. Well, I think it's a good solid picture. It's one of those things where you're not going to get a, a picture of uh, the dome at Yosemite unless you're at Yosemite. Yeah, but the thing is the composition is not, it wasn't balanced. Yeah. No, you, you're right because in the original composition that this whole tree line here, well, in this composition too, is still kind of like in the middle. Yeah. So it feels very right heavy. So you're right, you want something over here, like you want the moon or a setting sun or a llama up here. Yeah. yeah did, some, something just to balance it a little bit. I think bit. they found a pretty spot, but the composition is just a little off. Well, you know what they found a pretty spot? What they can do is they can pull out, um, like, uh, the photographer moon is going to be over yeah. here. And work that focal point. Plan it a little bit. Oh, well, what a nice little story. Though I hate this branch. I, I love this picture. But this branch is just stealing the focus, don't you think? Just me? Branches. Branches these days. I know. So we just had a couple of distractions. I'm just going to take those out real quick. Um, you like that better? Yeah, I do. I, I like the colors in here, too. This yeah. is almost spot color, I was but it's like say, nature spot color. It's nature spot like color. Like it wasn't artificially done. Yeah, that's a nice picture, Vlad. Yeah, it really is. It's very, it feels sweet. I feel like I know the kid who put that together and set it a sail. Like, there's a story behind it. I like that shot a lot. All right, fucking out. Cool shot. Uh, yeah, caught a perfect shutter speed. Just caught just the right amount of motion, but got everything else frozen. Great angle, cool lights. I don't know. I, I can't. Nothing coming to me to suggest. I think it's a fantastic shot. Yeah, it's a great shot. Love I like the colors. It too. Great processing on it. Nicely done. Ducks. Oh, mallards. Oh, I'm zoomed in. Uh. I don't okay. have any criticism. It, it's it's ducks getting some corn. This guy, we can't really see his eye, and that's a little distracting. Um, he's at a little bit of an awkward angle. And, you know, there's a lot of the picture that's not the subject, which is definitely these ducks. Um, I think it took me a while to notice the corn, and I think the corn's an important part of the story. You can see some on the bird's bill here. You might just wait until one of them is scooping it up. You know, just keep shooting. Uh, we have multiple birds here, so you want to use a little higher f-stop number and get this guy sharp, too. Or crop them out of the frame completely. But it's weird to have them in there and blurry, you know. Oh, I didn't mind that, but... Really? 
No, I didn't. I thought it gave the picture a bit of depth. But, yeah. It's a cute picture. Yeah, stuff to think about. Another mallard. Oh, this is beautiful. And, um, you know, I, I actually think this is a little more interesting of a picture because we've got water droplets here. The focal point is clear. Like, there's no way you can crop this any tighter, right? It's, it's a gorgeous picture. It feels like a portrait. You have great light. You can see where the sun is. Yeah, that's a nice picture. Mute. You could probably go down a stop on the shutter and ISO, but it doesn't seem noisy. Oh, mm -hmm. sleeping boy. That's really cute. I imagine this is the only time this kid holds still. <laughs> They're like, <"Fine laughs> He's sleeping, but he seems like a troublemaker. That video runs around a lot. I do like the colors, but I'd like to see it in black and white too, just to see. Yeah, you're right, because yeah, that that's way better. This is definitely a time to use. Black the levels because, need to be played with a bit, like raise the orange. Yeah, see here, like the first thing you see is this orange, and then there's all these pinks and stuff in the background, and they're brighter. They have more visual weight than the subject, which is the face. You, you can drive if you want, but I'll raise the oranges up for you. Cute picture. Yeah, really nice. Just, yeah, we often make pictures of kids black and white because they always wear such bright colors. It always competes. Some Canada geese coming Canada in for a geese. landing. I can hear their honking as they come in. Oh yeah, they do always honk. They make so cute. much noise. Um, my suggestion with the Canada geese, they're a really common bird. So people get a lot of pictures of them and a good way to make your picture stand out is to get a different picture. So that means you want to get closer or you want to take enough pictures where they're doing something interesting. So um, I think it's a good picture. I like that they're all in flight. You had a good shutter speed and everything. Yeah. I think you can take it to the next level. Yeah, I think it turned out well. Yeah. You know that picture was a challenge. Thanks for going out in the cold. Cool shot. Wow, this is cool. This almost looks like one of Strike's pictures. Though. Yeah, it does a, remind me of Strike. A watermark or anything on it. Uh, great pose. Cool location, not a single distraction. Nice Kinda level background. The light sources. <laughs> yep, level background. You know, I would have called you out on that. Interesting outfit. Yeah. Cool processing. I like it. Very different. I love the, you know, clearly somebody very carefully laid the skirt here and arranged it, and somebody very carefully positioned her hands. Like everything here is deliberate, and I appreciate that. And, you know, the eye contact going off camera really works. Into the negative space, it yeah. balances the picture. It makes it not seem like a portrait. Yeah. Um, but she's looking at something because sometimes people just kind of look off camera and they're just looks like they're just bored <laughs> No, she looks like she's intense and looking at something uh, So good model good photograph nicely done a good Great model processing. can make all the difference uh, Looks like you have a little sensor dust here definitely want to clean that sensor up a little bit uh, and um, The background is super noisy. Yeah, and it's such a good picture I would definitely go in and just clean up that background check editing wildlife photos in chapter 8 Wow, well, that's a cool picture. Beautiful picture, yeah. Uh, is that the arch? And no, it's not. <laughs> I don't know where that is. I'm not gonna guess. But I love the silhouette. What a great choice. I do too. It's a, and a, a beautiful composition with it too. I don't know how you manage that. I don't know if you planned it and waited, or you took a wide shot and then cropped. But it turned out great, and I love the processing on it too. Really nicely done. Great shot. Yeah, beautiful I, shot. I have nothing to suggest. Oh, I've never seen that before. I have never seen anything like that. What are those poking out like of that? his chest? De I, demon bird. He has little weapons. Yeah, he's got like tusks. This is a great picture. And it's a great picture too. I'm sorry to be. Maybe just so bring down the highlights biology. just a tiny bit, just because some of those yeah. feathers are a bit overexposed on his back. Yeah, maybe a little bit. You know, I'm actually I think I'm going to raise the, the, lower the blacks a little bit, add a little more contrast to it. Um, drop the whole exposure a little bit. I don't know that I helped. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. It's a little washed out here. I'll bring it down a little bit, maybe. Show a little more in the shadows. I don't know. Um, there's not much that needs to be done. The, no, they the get a great is head angle. It's fantastic, and obviously the bird is fascinating. Great lighting. We're both obsessed with this bird's biology. 
What is that? I don't know. What this could that bird be used is for? freaking me out. What is it out? doing with those things? Is it and its little something? face pancakes. What's up with those? Face pancakes. Face bananas. Wonderful. Oh, I wish I had face pan banana pancakes on my face. <laughs> this is pretty. Yeah, Spooky. That is cool. Uh, Bill Tucker. Hey, Bill. That um, bench is bugging me. Either I want somebody on the bench or I want the bench I gone. was thinking I want someone on the bench. You want the bench gone? Um, one or the other. But the bench being there empty, I don't know. To me, it didn't add to the picture. I don't feel like it needed anything else. I thought that was his llama. It seemed like the focal point. Yeah, maybe. I, mean, I like it. It's a matter of taste. You like it in the picture? Yeah, it gives my eye some place to settle and then explore. Like, I'm like, ooh, I'd like to be sitting there. Ooh, fog, tree moss. I, I, liked, I personally liked it better without the bench. Like I, think, I said, I think if there were something more interesting here than this bench, I I'd think be Bill for Tucker it. should dress up like a vampire and stand on the bench. <laughs> it reminds me of like bench. a romantic vampire movie. Yeah, the, but the mood in this picture is fantastic. And I do think it'd make an awesome setting for a portrait if somehow you could ever recreate that fog. Maybe it's he just has a really big fog machine. <laughs> this is a beautiful picture. Uh, pictures of woods can be really difficult to get, but uh, to, to convey. But you have like a nice path here that goes right into it. The colors and detail are just spectacular. It's it's beautiful. I, there's like you got anything? No, you did it. You did it. This is a nice shot. Beautiful. Yeah, that is really nice. Um, um, I wouldn't mind seeing it with a little bit longer of a shutter speed. Smooth out the water a bit? Yeah. It still looks really nice, though. I mean, yeah, I think it is really nice. That's beautiful. Great. White balance, good and sharp picture. You did everything right, and it was really... I know how challenging night photography can be, and you did a really nice job with it. All right. We have a nice portrait here. Great light, great exposure. I love the light on her hair. Uh, great background blur. Like bring a up nice the shadows just a bit in her eyes. Oh. But other than that, it looks good. Yeah. Really nice portrait. Nicely done. Perfect focus on that eye. This is a cool picture. Yeah. Look wow. at those shadows. Congrats. Yeah, bees in flight are so hard to get. I'm going to raise the whole exposure. See, I did that just looking at the histogram at first. It looked like that. Yeah. It's all to the left up here, so just... Drag it to the right some so you see a little bit of balance. That just adds pop to everything. The uh, flower is a little bright for me now. Well, yeah, I wonder if maybe they crank the saturation up a little bit. It seems a little... I'll just crank that back down. Maybe they added saturation Wait, instead of... Exposure. I want to drive. Okay, you take it. I like this one, and I want to drive. I just want to bring up the shadows so we can see his head de the detail <clears throat> in his eyes. And then I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit because the flower got a little bit blown out. And this needs to be smooth, the background. Yep. It's not that hard. Editing wildlife photography. Yeah, editing chapter wildlife. Five, noise. You just select it and get rid of that noise. But yeah, that's a nice picture. Definitely. I love that. Wait. Just a little bit of clarity. Let's go. <laughs> okay. We did it. We did it. Guitar All right. photo. So my first thought is, I, I wish this whole thing were in focus, or do you like the selective focus? I like the selective focus. Yeah? Yeah, but I think I would have put it on this first one. Yeah. Because it made my yeah, eyes search work. a little bit. When I first looked at the picture, I was like, whoa, there's no subject. And then I thought, oh, it's this. But I think if it had been this first one, then I, my eyes would have rested on it right away. What do you think? Yeah, maybe, or maybe just have everything in focus. I'm not sure. I, I would shoot it all those ways. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you don't know until you get back and you take a look at the different pictures. Yeah. Um, I, so because nice. the focus is so selective, I expect to look here and see something. Like maybe if Fender were written right here and we're suddenly in focus, then the name Fender would be the focus of it. Yeah, you're right. But you're, it's selective, so just the same as the rest of the pattern. Like, there's no reason for that part to be sharp and the rest of it not to be sharp. Didn't you just see this? No? That does not ring a bell to me. Maybe I'm just so used to seeing red stuff and snow. <laughs> but it is a nice picture. Yeah, what a cool composition. They put the sun 
in right the lighthouse. Where the lighthouse would be. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. It is really cool. I don't know if uh, maybe they planned that out and waited until the sun did, was in the perfect spot, or maybe it was just uh, lucky. But either way, nicely done and, and great concept. I, I like that a lot. I was almost thinking of like making the picture overall darker. Darker? Or just maybe contrast here, but do your worst and then I'll take a turn. Do my worst? Oh, that's cool. I like it pumped up a little with the contrast. Yeah. It's a great photo. Yeah, it, it does feel a little washed out to me. But then that feels like you're just losing so much detail. Don't you think? I'm just playing with it. You go. You go, girl. Well, I think we both decided we could use a little more contrast. Because that, that looks pretty washed out to me. Yeah, that looks too dark. But they have the raw file, probably. So you can play around with that. Yeah. You have fun. So I like that they saw the beauty in the light reflecting off of the water. Yeah. But I think that it's lacking a focal point. Yeah, you're right. It just needs... So um, if you see something... something really beautiful, like the reflections off of the water. Sometimes it makes a great background. I've noticed that. Yeah. Especially with like sunsets and stuff. They're nicer if you put a subject in them. Oh. Oh, another nice portrait. Perfect focus on the near eye. Um, actually, I think in a case like this, I'd go ahead and use a high f-stop number because you use a low f-stop number to blur the background. Um, or sometimes to blur people's skin just to hide imperfections. But this baby's perfect. This kid has no facial imperfections Not at all. Not even a speck of Cheeto dust around her mouth. And no boogies? No boogies. Uh, this is amazing. a sophisticated a child. child. Mm -hmm. And so you have this perfect low-key background. There's no reason to blur it. I would just put the baby's whole face in focus. I still love this picture. Yeah, I do too. Just beautiful light and I love the gaze out She's the window. She's so cute. And you know it's a candid because... I don't know that kid, but kids are hard to pose. I feel like it's a candid. All right, so again, uh, it's kind of a theme for the day is using the sun well, as a focal yeah, point. It's one of my favorite stuff. things. When I can't find yeah. a focal point, I throw the, phone, the sun in there. And I love the way that turned out. That, that was not a bad idea at I'm all. I'm actually having a problem with the foreground blending into the background too much. Yeah, I agree with that too. They need, I mean, you know, it's nice and blurred and out of focus, but... You know what, maybe the part of the problem is so much of the subject here in the foreground is also blurry. Mm. Maybe if you actually had more depth of field. But I do like focused. where they were going with it. Yeah. I admire that. And I like those god rays that they got too. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really cool the way it's streaming through. I definitely see what you liked about it. Oh, what? That beautiful That's so cardinal cute. picture. Like Zoom. That. I think this picture could just be tight. Cropped. You would just crop it, maybe more like yeah, that. Yeah, because zoom out. The first thing I thought was, I want to see the subject more, because that whole bottom left part is just nothing. Yeah, you're right. I didn't have my hand on the mouse at the time, and you're like, zoom it already. Yes, just zoom <laughs> it! And that's what everybody who sees it is going to want to say. They're going to be oh, that looks like a cool thing. I just need to get closer to yeah. it. So just give them that. Just reward them. Let's do it. And if you're making uh, a massive print for your wall, go ahead and use the whole thing. But for the rest of us who are looking at it on the internet, just give us what we want. Let us zoom right in tight. It'll make a better thumbnail too. Nice. Perfect head pose, great light, beautifully sharp, nicely done. Oh, adorbs. He's eating a peanut. Kevin O'Toole. Oh, let's zoom down. Oh, wow, I love the shadows mm -hmm. here. I think that is a subject and nicely done. Yeah, I like that. Because we see so many beach scenes and you love it when you're there, but it's hard to capture. I and think he really captured the essence of this beach. Yeah, they, he really did. Good job, Great Kevy. work, Kevin. It's all about that shadow. Just great eye with that shadow. Nice work on the horizon. Kevy OT. Speaking of shadows. What's this? Uh, is this a peep show? What am I looking at? Why would at? you think that? Is this... I, I, we're both... Is that a... I, I do not know what's going on. <laughs> I, I just don't know what that is. It's been processed. I can tell this by looking at the histogram that they did some processing to it. It looks like there's some like shakiness and movement to it. I, I, I do not know what that is. Oh, is it like 
the blinds reflected back on a door or something. It's pretty neat. I just have no idea. Yeah, maybe. It does seem like it must be a reflection or something, right? Is it a tree outside of a window? Uh, maybe that's maybe we're supposed to ponder it. Sometimes art just makes you ask questions. Well, it was intriguing. It I'll did give make it that. us ask questions. All right, so we have some street photography here. Uh, the old person looking for change. But like, it's good eye contact. I like the line of the stairs. Good contrast. The black and white treatment is good. The I feel old, like it's a good picture. The old person looking for change. Like that's like a typical one that you see. Uh, I, I think it's a typical street photography picture. You yeah. definitely see a lot oh, of yeah. that. That's yeah. what I meant. Just that, yeah, this is, this is the type of picture that people take and uh, usually toss them a couple of bucks and they don't mind so much. Yeah, so if you take a picture, you should give them change. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like this post here, though. Don't you think like if they slid a little bit to the left and framed this post out of here while keeping these stairs? I don't mind it. Hmm. We only have like a few minutes left. Okay. I just don't want us to be interrupted. That's beautiful. Yeah, that really is gorgeous. It's like ice, but lava almost. I don't know what this is, but it's fantastic. That's cool. I like the background too. It looks like um, Hawaii almost. Oh, I like it zoomed in. Oh, you're like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less than that, but. You know, this tree is a little distracting mm -hmm. here. Those two trees, I find them distracting. And I'm going to go horizontal with it, don't you think? What do you That's think? cool. I like that. Yeah, I think a little tighter crop again. Just, you know, I found that Cleaned tree to be a distraction. Cute baby. Cute baby, all swaddled up. Very nice processing, nice soft light. Uh, no distractions whatsoever. Yeah, it looks good. What do you think? Should they have gone for more depth of field? Was there a reason maybe, to blur the background? Maybe just a tiny bit more, just yeah. because the, it looks like the mouth is in focus, but not the eyes. Yeah, I would do that too. It's just, it's lacking a little bit of sharpness and there's no reason to blur it. Maybe there's nothing it's, we need to Maybe hide. just a tiny bit, peaking a tiny bit too. Mm. Like the blanket's just blown out. But yeah. But yeah, not, I guess the lesson today is not everything needs to have a shallow depth of field. All right, so this picture's been pumped up quite a bit. This is some <laughs> pumped up. We got up. some HDR processing and, or saturation and definitely saturation. But the focal point here is the rainbow, and they really want us to see that. Uh, I get that tree out of the foreground. Really? I don't know. Maybe it adds depth. I mean, there's a go lot going it. on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And there's the rainbow has a lot of competition with all these other bright colors. I think I might have just selectively, if you needed to pump up the colors of the rainbow, I might have just done it for that. Because I know rainbows never appear in a picture the way you saw them with your eye. And so know, you might want to go in and just try to recreate what you saw. And that might require pumping up the saturation of the rainbow. But I'm confident the rest of the world didn't look So leave bright. everything else not oversaturated and then selectively saturate the rainbow and if you're like how do I do that I actually have a video on spot color coming up and you could apply it to this so, so stay tuned yeah keep your eye out for that subscribe okay this has got to be the same guy right we yeah have two but, different people um, shooting fenders I really like that one they have an interesting background that's I can tell that that's added um yeah, lens the flare, Photoshop but... <laughs> lens flare is always too perfect. Yeah, but I still like it. Yeah, I like it too. And see, so this is actually a good example because here this is in focus. So our eyes are rewarded with something. And before, so, so this makes the selective depth of field work for me. Yeah, also a trick with the uh, lens flare, since everybody that uses it knows what it looks like, you can kind of throw people off by, like Tony's doing, by taking some of it out or um, by making it its own layer and warping it a little bit so it's not so perfect. So you can customize it so people don't know. Yeah, and you can also do real world lens flare. Just You can even just use like the light on your iPhone and just kind of shine it in from the corner of the frame. Yeah, this is more controlled, but yeah. 
Beautiful picture. Wow. Yeah, it looks like a mockingbird to me. What a yeah. sassy little mockingbird. Yeah, and you got that head turn right because I know he was probably looking away most of the time. But he I love he the snow and it. the moss. Yeah, we don't actually need to see that much of the background to convey, I don't think. Like, we just need to see a little bit of the snow and the moss. I'm pull it That's beautiful. Bit. You know, you're going to think me crazy, but I think this one, I liked this one backed out a little bit. You did? Yeah, the snow and the moss was just so pretty. Yeah, I guess it's it's not. I, I do like that. That is beautiful. It's, and I love the. It's all this that I feel like. But I don't want to cram him up in the upper left corner. Yeah. Well, maybe it's the right crop. Star trails. Star oh, trails. That's beautiful. We have a lot of gaps here. I wonder what happened. I, I love this. This is like an, uh, some aqueduct or something. I guess it's just a really cool, cool bridge. But great focal point. I love that. Uh, you pointed it right north. Um, this is a stunning picture. There's, if you look in chapter 10 under the Star Trail section, I suggest an app that will let you get rid of the dashes in there. It'll just rotate everything around and fix it for you. Um, I'm not sure why you had gaps. Clearly the camera stopped taking pictures several times. You know what, maybe they were wiping moisture off of it and they kept stopping the expo oh. exposure because uh, that moisture will collect on the lens. Um, there's a lot of noise in here. You can, like everything that's not moving, it's just mm -hmm. censored noise. Um, so, uh, good question. You know, a dark slide can help. I discussed that a little bit where you just put the lens cap on and take a 30 second picture and then the, the star trail software will subtract out the noise from that. Oh. So that's one way to do it. They might have also just cranked up the brightness too much. See if we just. Well, anyway, very cool picture. Uh, please do keep at it. You must have been out there for hours. <laughs> so I appreciate your tenacity. Nicely done. That's a nice photo. So this is oh. a repeat. Did we see this one before? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, beautiful jellyfish. I love the way they do this in the aquariums with the yeah, they bright light them blue up. background. Yeah. It's like they're setting it up for photographers. Yeah, it's really um, pretty. I feel like this crop here is a little uncomfortable. Um, it's really difficult. I have a similar picture, and it's better if you wait for one of the jellyfish to be isolated yeah. and alone. Yeah. But the colors and everything are really beautiful, and I do like a lot of the shapes in there. Just a, a little cluttered. I want to do a couple more because I, I, I just saw the thumbnail of this picture. And it's I beautiful. Love it because lines and simplicity and balance, geometry here. The colors. Uh, the shadows and the colors. This is a stunning picture. I really like it. It's so simple. Um, but the focal point is completely obvious and clear. Uh, there is... I don't know if this was scanned from a slide or something. There's lots of just junk up here. Oh, yeah. What is going... Oh, what? Wait. Do they have like a... Is this a night shot? Could that be the moon? I think this might be at the moon. And those might be stars? Because I didn't really do that. I wish I had the metadata on this, but... Um... Oh, they're snowflakes being blown. <laughs> they're just little bits of snow. Okay, that okay. makes sense. I was trying to figure out what those lines were. That's beautiful. But yeah, beautiful, simple picture. Great. Nicely done. Yeah, Good I love use that of composition. Too. And then I just wanted to show this one because it reminds me so much of your picture. That's cool. Um, yeah, having the, the snow there really adds a lot to it. I love the blue doors too. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's the, the, uh, their composition, all the negative space. Yeah, it's, it's off balance, but it feels very deliberate, and I feel like it really works with this particular subject, and great processing on it. Uh, so that's all for today. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys, and if you didn't see your picture, just hang on. We have a bit of a backlog, and okay. we're working through it. It takes some time. Thanks so much. Thank you.